Breaking news. Latest, North Korea fires missile that lands in sea near Russia. Now, this is from Reuters. North Korea defies calls, reigns in its new weapons program. They fired a ballistic missile that landed in the sea near Russia on Sunday, days after a new leader came to power in South Korea, pledging to engage Pyongyang in dialogue. Now, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley, called the launch a message by Pyongyang to South Korea after the election of President Moon Jae-in, who took office on Wednesday. Now, Japanese Defense Minister Tomomi Inada said the missile could be a new type because it flew for over 30 minutes before being dropped into the sea between North Korea and Japan. You can see the image to the right of me. Now, on top of that, North Korea has consistently test-fired missiles in that direction and the missile flew 430 miles. It reached an altitude of more than 1,245 miles. And according to officials in South Korea and Japan, further and higher than an intermediate range missile, North Korea successfully tested back in February from the same region. Now, intercontinental ballistic missiles are considered to usually have a range of more than 3,700 miles. So a U.S. official speaking on condition of anonymous said the missile landed 60 miles south of Russia's Vladivostok region. So this is a huge slap to China because China is currently holding meetings and a with unilateral meetings actually with not only President Putin but multiple nations. I think there's 20 or something nations involved. So here's what I see. I see this as being more saber rattle. And I almost wonder if it was even North Korea that did it, or if it's some type of staged ploy to piss China off and get China involved. Could there be some black ops involved here? Could this be a cover story to create some serious chaos in that region? It could get nasty quick. Now, I'm going to be an optimist and say that this is all just sculpting the masses for continual propaganda because they're doing other things that hopefully aren't as bad but for some reason they don't want us to know about yet I find that hard to believe I see this you guys as being getting as being very close to the next war is going to be with North Korea now we've never officially been out of war with North Korea my grandfather fought in the war against Korea back in the day and that's one of those wars that you don't hear a lot about. A lot of people don't talk about it. You hear about World War II and Vietnam and obviously the Iraq War, Afghanistan, this perpetual war we've been in since 2001. We're not perpetual, but this continual war that we've been in since 2001. So what happened before we went into Afghanistan? What happened before we went into Iraq? Go back for a minute in your mind and think about what the media was pushing and how they were pumping bin Laden, how they were pumping Saddam Hussein, they were completely pushing the boogeyman being Afghanistan, Iraq, and Muslim extreme terrorists that live in caves in the middle of Afghanistan. That was the picture that they painted. And so many people fell for it. Absolutely fell for it, 100%, no questions asked. They're doing the same thing right now with North Korea. They are sculpting the picture so much that people are going to be like, yes, go after him, go after him. And they're getting ready to drop the hammer with a false flag, a serious false flag. Now, this false flag is going to spin people so much, they're going to do the same thing that they did back in 2001 after the Twin Towers collapsed within their own footprints. Tower 7 collapsed within its own footprint. No questions asked. Let's go blow up Iraq, blow up Afghanistan. Trillions of dollars later, we're still there. Look at the nation now. Look at the mindset of people that have been fighting Afghanistan and Iraq. You've probably got friends and family that have fought out there. It's probably screwed up their heads. I've got friends and family that have fought over there and have told me about just some of the nasty stuff that went on and how they feel like they're going to hell now because of what it was like over there. They got that brainwashed. And do you know what they felt like before they went over there? They felt like it was like the honeymoon of getting ready for war, getting them amped up, thinking they're doing the right thing. And then they get there and they realize, oh my gosh, 
this isn't anything close to what we were told it was going to be on a mental aspect, on a spiritual aspect, and what does that do to you physically? It eats at you. Well, as I've told my friends and family, you joined for the right reasons. You didn't know what you were getting yourself into. You didn't know you were fighting a banker's war. They tricked you. They fooled you. You figured out what was going on, and now you're aware. People have learned from their mistakes. It's really unfortunate for everybody. It's unfortunate for the people that have had their lives destroyed overseas. It's unfortunate for people that have had their lives destroyed here at home. It's unfortunate for everybody, except for the dungeon master profiteers, the super dark cabal that feeds off of death and destruction. You can call them what you want. They make billions of dollars off of war. They make billions of dollars off of killing people, off of maiming people. You can call that whatever you want. And it screws up people on every side while they're at it. The good guys, the bad guys, and everybody in between. Because they'll take two good guys and they'll mix they'll they'll get two good guys pissed off at each other because of their beliefs, because of their spiritual beliefs or because of their political beliefs. And then they'll get them to fight each other and all in the meanwhile they're just pulling the strings behind the scenes, laughing. Now, I certainly hope that there isn't going to be a false flag. I certainly hope that this is just speculation, and I hope that you can leave a comment a year from now, six months from now, saying, see, Rex, nothing happened. We didn't go to war with North Korea. I really hope that's the case. There's been too much in the past with the media that sculpts the masses' mindsets too many parallels that I see previously to now to think that nothing's going down, especially after the emergency meetings, after the propaganda machine is trying to pit North Korea and China against each other. They're trying to get China involved. And they're doing it at a time when Russia is meeting with China. Does it make logical sense that North Korea is going to launch a missile when Russia and China are meeting and then lose any support from their biggest allies. Does that make sense to you? It just doesn't make sense to me. Now, maybe that's, maybe little Kim is so freaking nuts that that's what he wanted to do. It just makes no logical sense to me. The logical explanation is that this is a staged event. This is something that the media is orchestrating to create the mass hysteria of people wanting to go after North Korea because they feel in danger. And then there could be a false flag, or maybe they don't need to have a false flag because they can just spin the masses so much with their media propaganda machine that they'll say, go ahead and go in there anyway. They'll give you public support. What do you think is going to happen? I'm certainly glad that I have an opportunity this week to go out to South Dakota and check out that area where X-Fest is going to be held. Now, these are literally 2,000 square foot concrete dome still enforced bunkers for 25,000 bucks. Somebody sent me a link the other day said, check out these bunkers, Rex. They're still bunkers. They're 8 feet by 12 feet. They'll, they'll put them in your yard so you don't have to go far. They'll bury them in your yard. <laughs> 45,000 bucks for a 96 square foot still bunker buried in your backyard. 96 square feet. Or a 2,000 square foot concrete dome with land around it where you could actually grow stuff, heavily fortified, in the middle of nowhere, South Dakota, yet half an hour away from the Black Hills, about an hour away from Sturgis, approximately, a little bit more than an hour away from Sturgis, so when you want to go to the bike rally, if you want to go check it out, or if you just like the Black Hills, or here's how I'm looking at it, folks. I'm hoping that everything is fine and nothing goes down and next week when I get to South Dakota and I have an opportunity to share it with you guys, because I'm going to be doing live footage out there showing you what the place is all about, well, I'm going to turn it into a studio and I'm going to show you how cheap it is to set up an off-grid living quarters. Literally. I'm going to take my equipment out there and I'm going to spend a couple weeks out there and show how easy and cheap it is to live off-grid. And as I'm saying that, I'll be into it into a week, and I'll be like, man, I want to go home. No, I'm just kidding. I'm excited. I can't wait to do it because, first of all, I don't like big cities. Second of all, I don't like being surrounded by cell phone towers and Wi-Fi signals and, and walking zombies 
So I'm really looking forward to getting into an area that I'll have some peace and quiet and I'll have the opportunity to really get in tune with nature and myself and the stars. I'm taking my scope out there. So if you guys want to go to XFest, make sure to RSVP and you can stay in one of these bunkers for free. And if you're interested in purchasing one of these bunkers, they're 25 grand. Uh, uh, Robert will finance for three years, no interest. And you could go in on one of these things with up to 10 people. I've heard Robert say you could actually fit 20 people in one, and you could, but do you, I mean, 20 people in a 2,000 square foot space. I, you know, that's way too much for me. Personally, I like having the bunker to myself, but, you know, I mean, if you just want to do it as cheap as possible, and if you want to go, you know, 2,500 bucks times 10 people, that's 25 grand, boom, there you go. There's yourself a nice nest egg in South Dakota, not far from the Black Hills, not far from the Badlands, and it's, I'm hoping that eventually it'll be, hopefully sooner than later, it'll be like a micro-community that will have brilliant minds from all over the world out there with you know a, a vacation bunker essentially turning it into a studio or some type of uh, shop or laboratory whatever you know just plus the fact that if things do go bad at any moment things could go down quick and here's another thing that I I feel when things get bad if things get really bad they're gonna get really bad really fast and it's going to be a dominoes effect. It's going to be boom, 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 boom. People are not going to know what to do. People are going to be looking like literally the deer in the headlights. They're, they're just not going to know how to handle it because they're not going to be prepared. I mean, you've seen what happens when people can't get their cheap electronics on Black Friday. What happens when those same people can't get food and water, especially when it's been given to them by the government for so many years? What happens when people can't get their medicines? What happens when people can't get fuel for their car? I would much rather be out there in South Dakota in my bunker. And it's not a bunker underground, folks. I mean, it's actually it's enclosed in dirt. It's got dirt on top of it, but it's not like it's underground. So if you're looking for an underground underground bunker, the X-Fest still, the X-Point bunkers wouldn't be for you. There's plenty of other options for that. These things are literally, well, about 2,100 square feet because of the dimensions, and they're built like igloos. They're very stable, and they've got dirt over them, so you can grow, grow crops over them, and you've got approximately, well, you've got several hundred feet on each side of you of open space. Windmills are going to be very efficient out there, I feel, because there's a decent amount of wind out there for power. I'm also taking my solar, power, uh, my solar panels and solar generator out there and eventually I'm going to set up a solar pond where I dig a huge hole in the ground like the size of an Olympic swimming pool pour some water and chemicals in there and get a turbine motor and I'll have a very very cheap energy for years to come so I'm looking forward to it I'm looking forward to meeting you guys out there if you want to RSVP go to terravivos.com use the code leak project plus if you do purchase a bunker out there. Use the code Leak Project. There's extra goods in it for you. Um, you can pick either a solar generator setup, a windmill, or a Berkey water filter. So, pretty good opportunity for you. That's my shameless plug. Have a beautiful day. Question everything. Let's hope that nothing goes down, but let's be aware of this kind of stuff, guys, because especially with all these little weird, you know, for example, the Hanford nuclear site, where there was the hole, the collapsing of a tunnel that leads to the extraction point where they used to extract plutonium and uranium that has been put in over 60,000 of our weapons. Very weird that that tunnel that's located right there collapses. You know, I sensed espionage, not espionage, but sabotage of some sort. Would it be easy for, if we do go to war, would it be easier for these countries like North Korea to just pay some disgruntled ex-employees or just some really bad people to hit soft targets like that. I think that those certain areas, there, there needs to be top-notch security in those facilities and the locations that are considered soft targets like that, they need to amp it up, especially with all the turmoil that's going on right now. So, there you go. Have a good one, you guys. Be the change you want to see.